How to build the Blackgate's twin steam engine, part 10. Dismantling the engine to paint it, ready for the final assembly. But before that, I need to explain something. Both of these engines are mounted on a common bed plate, and the engine that you're currently looking at is the rear engine. Although I'm showing the fitting of the crankshaft, this is the front crankshaft, it's the one with the standard crank pin. I still have to build up the crankshaft that's going in this rear engine. And here it is. The crank pin is not going to be as long as this, it needs shortening. This crank pin needs to be a little bit longer than the normal crank pin, so it will engage in a slot in a driving plate that I haven't made yet. So for the moment, I'm just showing a clip of a bottle of Loctite 603, and I've used this Loctite 603 to stick the crank pin into the hole in the crank web. I held the crankshaft by the crank pin in the three jaw chuck to keep everything square. This is quite important. And while the Loctite 603 is curing, I thought I'd have a look at the gasket situation. I need to make some gaskets, primarily for the lower cylinder cover, but also for the upper cylinder cover. You can see on screen what I'm doing. I've drawn around the cover, and then I've cut a hole out of the middle, so it fits around the slight protrusion on the cylinder cover, but this gasket material is far too thick. I think I'll put the top cylinder cover in place and use some of this. It's called hydraulic seal. It's an equivalent to Loctite 542. It looks the same, smells the same, and tastes the same. Health and safety warning, do not taste this product. It's probably poisonous. That was a joke. In bad taste. And the pun was intentional. This Loctite sets when you deprive it of oxygen. And there won't be much oxygen between the cylinder itself and the cylinder cover once it's all bolted together. I'm using these 6BA dome head brass bolts to secure the cover to the cylinder, and these are what came with the kit. Normally, I would use hexagon headed bolts for jobs like this, and as this engine is not a scale representation of any full size engine, it's perfectly fine. Two things you have to watch when you're tightening bolts like this one is, make sure the screwdriver doesn't slip for obvious reasons, and the other one is, do not over tighten them because they will shear off. After all, they're only made out of brass. For the bottom cylinder covers, a different approach is required as they need to be removable to allow the piston ring to be changed. So for that reason, I'm going to use gaskets on the lower cylinder covers, but the gasket material needs to be much thinner than the stuff I normally use. In this clip, I'm removing the steam fittings that are temporarily fitted, so I can paint the engine, and I won't be refitting these parts until almost at the end of the build. My logic for the layout of the engine being like it's going to be is twofold. One, it's going to be mechanically better than the other way, as shown in a previous video. And also, it will be very easy to convert these engines back to two individual ones, for use perhaps in a twin propeller model boat. Once I've finished this engine and played with it for a while, no, I'll rephrase that, once I've finished this engine and run it in, so I know everything's fine, the engine will be for sale on my Mainsteam Models website, and 100% of the proceeds will go to charity. This stuff is called cellulose putty, and it's a really fine filler. And this is what I'm going to use to fill the small holes and imperfections generally around the cylinder castings. As the name on the tube would suggest, this is a cellulose product. And in the blue aerosol cap behind my hand in the picture is a small amount of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as it's known in the USA. You will notice that after I apply the cellulose putty, I use a paintbrush dipped in cellulose thinners to smooth it all out. That means less sanding required before painting. A word of caution though, this stuff is only good for very minor indentations. It isn't a general purpose filler and must not be applied too thickly. Otherwise, it will probably crack as it dries, and the drying itself will take a really long time. This is a glass oiler from a company in China called Microcosm. And it's quite a nice thing. It would be much better, though, if it didn't fall apart. I have a pair of these, and I think they will make really good crankshaft oilers. In my opinion, they're a bit too long for normal, general-purpose oilers, but they're OK for this engine, because there's a large gap between the V part of the mounting. So aesthetically, it will look OK. The thread on these oilers is M4, so I'm currently using an M4 tap to thread the existing hole in the casting. I drilled this hole slightly deeper using a number 33 drill, but I did not go through all the way into the bearing surface. The original very small diameter hole that went down into the bearing was left intact. Before fitting these oilers, I'm going to use some Loctite 603 to make sure the glass does not come loose or leak. 
The base of the glass where it goes into the brass part was already roughened. It was probably loose because they used the wrong type of adhesive, I don't know, but this should be okay. I'm twisting the glass to make sure that it gets a nice even coating of Loctite 603, and that way it really should never come loose. And now, with mounting excitement, it's time to paint the engine. I thought to myself, what colour should I paint this engine? Let me think, the engine is called a Blackgate's Twin. I think the colour is possibly in the name. If Blackgate's Engineering was called Greengate's Engineering, I would paint the engine green. But it's not, so black it is. This is a tin of Humbrol satin black paint, and it's the same tin of paint that I used to paint the horizontal Southworth engine's water pump. And as that looks good, I'm assuming this one will come out the same way. Because of the porosity of the castings, that's a good word, I may need to give it two coats. And I'm confident that this black paint will stick to the casting because I use Phoenix Precision Paints Single Pack Etch Primer first. I need to leave the cylinders for a while to make sure that the cellulose putty is fully hardened before painting those. Here we have the base and I've painted the ends of it with some marking out blue, marked it out and drilled some holes. These are the main mounting holes to allow the engine to be fastened down into a boat or onto a plinth or whatever happens to it in the future. The paint is drying, the cellulose stopper is getting harder by the minute, and that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.